It's a pleasure for me to give you an update on the MIND Act trial. Microarray in node negative disease may avoid adjuvant chemotherapy. The MIND Act trial is about the uh, safety gene array, the MAMA print, and the, cho the choice of having adjuvant chemotherapy. In this trial started uh, 10 years ago, patients with invasive breast cancer were um, um, analyzed according to uh, risk for their, their risk for having uh, um, metastatic disease by the clinical factors as nodal status, tumor size, and age, and by this 70 gene array, the MAMA print. Patients who were concordant in high risk assessment, they received all chemo. Patients who are concordant in the low risk assessment, for the vast majority, they received adjuvant endocrine treatment. The discordant patients were randomized between either uh, chemotherapy on the basis of the clinical risk, the pathological risk, or chemotherapy based on the uh, outcome of the MAMA print test. High risk, no uh, chemotherapy, low risk, no chemotherapy. The first five years results were uh, presented already uh, four years ago, uh, where the primary endpoint, and that is the group of women who had a clinical high-risk breast cancer, meaning that half of them had no positive disease. They had mainly grade two and three breast cancers and tumor sizes over two centimeters. So they had a clinical high-risk breast cancer, they had a low-risk mama print outcome, and they were randomized to no chemotherapy. And this is the primary outcome. In five years, the, their distant metastasis-free survival, distant disease-free survival was 95%, to be exact, 94.7%. And this was above the level of 92%, which was considered important. At those times, we could also look at the effect of chemotherapy in the group of clinical high risk, mama print low risk, and there was a non significant effect of chemotherapy at five years of 1.5%. That was the main outcome of uh, that analysis. Now we are almost four years further. We have an average follow up of 8.7 years. And um, we have a much stronger follow-up of uh, five years. Over 90% of women have a follow-up of five years or more. And the average follow-up is 8.7 years. And we have, of course, there is a, a, lot of, a lot more events. So statistics could be stronger. What we have found in this update after almost nine years is that the primary endpoint being the five-year disease-free survival in the main group being the women with a clinical high-risk breast cancer, mama print low risk, no chemotherapy, the five-year metastasis-free survival is maintained 95% uh, with a much smaller confidence limit. So the primary endpoint is confirmed and stronger. We have now longer follow-up, and we could look at the secondary endpoints, being um, the uh, effect of chemotherapy in the uh, in the different subgroups, in the discordant uh, subgroups. And what we see now is that at almost nine years, in the group clinical high risk, mama print low risk, there is an effect of chemotherapy of two. 0.5% at 8.7 years in favor of chemotherapy. Um, and this is now statistically significant. Then we looked at, and that's quite important, then we looked at the different age group and we looked at particularly the menopausal status. So we looked at the group of under 50, the women and the women over 50. And what we have seen is that in the woman, women over 50 in this group, there is no, um, no effect of chemotherapy. In the woman, in the group 
women under the 50, there is a small, there is an effect of about 5% at 8.7 years of chemotherapy versus no chemotherapy in women with clinical high risk, luminal type breast cancer, that's the selection, the luminal type breast cancer uh, under 50. And if you look at the curves, you see they start to split after four, five years. In the four, first four years, you don't see a, a different in effect of adjuvant chemotherapy in disease-free survival. But after four or five years, you see that the curves is going to split. This suggests, this is an important suggestion, that the effect of chemotherapy in these premenopausal women could very well be due to ovarian suppression by the chemotherapy. So that, in fact, it is a hormonal effect. And if we look at the soft and tech studies, we can see that um, uh, ovarian suppression adds to the survival uh, in, in women with home, uh, luminal breast cancer who have been treated with tamoxifen alone versus ovarian, the addition of ovarian suppression. And this effect is also seen only after five, six years. Then the curves are going to split. So yes, we see a different of five, difference of 5% in favor of adjuvant chemotherapy in the clinical high-risk, mama print, low-risk group of women um, uh, of the chemotherapy. And this could very well be a result of ovarian suppression. But a direct cytotoxic effect is not completely excluded. I think these are the most important results. Another important result is that there is no differences in outcomes whatsoever in patients who have in, uh, luminal breast cancer who are node negative and who are node positive. There is no difference. So indeed, the nodal status in itself is not a factor to uh, consider adjuvant chemotherapy in this clinical high-risk women. For the postmenopausal women, the 70 gene array outcome in this clinical high-risk group is very robust. In the premenopausal women, there is a shared decision-making situation where you say either chemotherapy or tamoxifen or tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression. And this needs to be discussed with the individual uh, woman.